Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Oak House Church. It is time for us to go into the school of the spirit. Now, the school of the spirit is where we delve deep into the word of God and dig to find those mysteries that have been recorded to be hidden in God's word. So grab your pens, grab your notepads and your Bible and listen as we go into the school of the spirit. The faith and of the knowledge of the son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we henceforth, and this is the reason, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. They have deceived so many. There are so many lying prophets, lying ministers. There are so many agents of Satan and all they are doing, all they are interested in is uh, to lure people away from the truth. And they come up with all kinds of doctrines, with all kinds of uh, teachings that are outside of what Jesus Christ has taught us. And so that is why it is important. That is why Jude was writing, he said, contend earnestly for the faith that was once delivered unto you because if you don't do so, there is the tendency that somewhere along the line, you begin to hear a different thing and then begin to believe a different thing and begin to do a different thing. And the Bible tells us that in the last days, there is going to be a great falling away. A great falling away in the sense that so many are going to depart from the faith, paying heed to doctrines of Satan, paying heed or attention to what is not the gospel or what is not the word of God. In First Timothy chapter 6, in verse 12, Paul was writing the same thing. In 1 Timothy 6 to he said, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. He says, So fight a good fight of faith. It's a fight that you must fight, it's a war that you must contend. You must contend for that faith. If you just don't want to do that, they sell anything and everything to you, and then you buy them. Now, let's go to that Jude, chapter 1. And then go to verse 4. He said, for, he said, for there are certain men crept in on our ways. And there are so many of them today in the, in the church in the name of preaching the gospel and they, are, they have different forms and different shades and they come in different dimensions and all of that. Some of them you won't even know. And some actually started very well. Some began very well. There was no problem with them. They, stood, they stuck to the truth, they stayed with the truth, and all of that. But somewhere along the line, because of the same problem, not being conscious of what is around you. So he said, for there are certain men crept in on our ways who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men they are turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. That is what is going on today. Into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. There are so many of them. And the funniest thing about it is that these people, they command a very, 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 very large membership or congregation. And they are being taught the wrong thing. You see, when you listen to the wrong thing, you are going to believe that wrong thing that you listen to, 
And that wrong thing that you listen to, which you believe, is what you are going to do. And when you begin to do that wrong thing that you listen to and believe, the next thing is that you are going to start having bad results. Because it is you are what you do. It is when you begin to do the wrong thing, you are going to get the wrong result. And that wrong result is as a result of what you pay, at, you have been paying attention to. So that is why it is important that you listen to the right message, to the right kind of thing, so that we will not find ourselves into that kind of problem. Verse 5. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. So you see, he's warning us, because if you start well, and somewhere along the line, <clears throat> you fall by the wayside, you give up the faith, you believe the wrong thing and begin to do the wrong thing, you are going to be destroyed. You are going to go to hell. Look at it here. That is why he, he said, I want to remind you again. I want to put you in remembrance. Though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, all the people that were saved from Egypt, they started well. They listened to Moses. They passed through the Red Sea. They experienced the miracles of God and all of that. And they knew God and they had God and all of that. So how come at the end of the day, not all of them entered the promised land? Out of the millions of people that left Egypt, only but two or three of them finally made the journey to the promised land more than four million people, more than four million people left Egypt. God delivered them from Egypt. Out of more than four million, less than two or three, about two, it was actually Joshua and Caleb. Among the people that left Egypt. So why? It's the same thing. If it could happen to them in those days, not to talk about now that more deception and all kinds of things are flying and going about, they are in the air, everywhere you turn. The truth of God's word is very scarce. Now, he said, and the angels which kept not the, their first estate, but left their own habitation and had... He had reserved an everlasting chain under the darkness and judgment unto the judgment of the great day. Even the angels of God that began well, <coughs> they were God's angels created by God. They were worshiping and serving God and doing all of that. How come somewhere along the line they failed? Somebody deceived them. They bought the, tr they, they bought the lies that Lucifer sold to them. They bought it and they followed him. And that is what has ended them. They were once God's angels. That's why you hear people that say, once you are saved, you are forever saved. That's the doctrine of Satan. But guess what? Large number of people are following them, they are believing them, they are, they are everywhere, more than you can imagine. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication because they have told you that the moment you are saved, it is your spirit that is saved. Your body is not. It is your spirit that will go to heaven. So your body is one that is going to be buried and all of that. So it doesn't really matter what you do with your body. That's the concept they are coming from. That's the, the, the doctrine, the lies of the devil and all of that. They are preaching and teaching people. And a lot of people are buying into it and they believe it because that is the easy way out. Verse 
give me first Timothy chapter six. <clears throat> Verse 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their masters worthy of all honor that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather to them but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to hold some words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. You see, there are doctrines which is according to doc, uh, godliness. And so there is also doctrines that are not according to godliness. Verse 4. He said he is proud, not knowing but is proud, knowing nothing but doing about questions and strifes of words, whereof comment, envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. This is a doctrine that they are preaching. They, they are, that is what they are teaching and preaching. So, supposing that gain is godliness, that how you know that God is great and God that you are doing well is because you are prospering, because you have a lot of money, your business is growing and all of that. So that means that God is happy with you. You see, this is the doctrine and all of that, that people are, if any way you go, is very, this one is very rampant. That's why they are preaching prosperity. So when they see that you don't have money and all of that, it means that God is not with you. So the evidence that God is with you is that your business is doing well, that you have a lot of money, your career is moving on and all of that. So that is why they say, that's the, this is the gospel that people are preaching. So it didn't even start today. So perverse disputing of men, corrupt men, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such. He said from such people do what? Turn away. Don't even have anything to do with it. There are a couple of people, kind of people that the Bible encourages us saying you should not have fellowship with them. One day I'm going to bring all of those things out and show you. He said, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Verse 8, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we'll carry nothing out of this world. This is what is called sound doctrine. That is what it is. You build your faith, build your life, build your doctrine, build your belief and everything on this truth. Verse 8, and having food and raiment, let us thereby, uh, let us therewith be content. That is, this is the gospel. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful loss, which draw men in destruction and perdition. They that will be rich, they that are going after money, pressing for career, you know, their mind are business and breakthroughs and open doors, they are running from what the money and business and all of that is he says such people have made shipwreck of their faith. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful laws which draw men in destruction. And, perdition. and so you see a lot of things that they do in order to make this money. They cut corners, they swindle, they betray, they lie, they cheat, they defraud. They do all kinds of things. And then they come to church and so as long as the money is coming, it doesn't matter how or the means by which it came. He said, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves 
through with many sorrows. You know why I'm reading all this? These are the messages that are flying everywhere. It's very, very, very common. Acts of Apostles chapter 20. Verse 26. Why, wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed, therefore, unto yourself and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God which he purchased, which he has purchased with his own blood, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flood. They are everywhere. Also of your own self shall men arise within you. Men will also arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. So you see, any, I said anywhere you turn in the Bible, you will see all kinds. You will see, they are everywhere. There are so many of them. About lies, about deceptions, about, and many are falling victims by the day. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Many are falling victims by the day. So people are developing itching ears, wanting to hear the kind of thing that will please them. So, so that's why we give them that kind of message and they like it. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. So we have them false prophets everywhere. He said, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Some are puffed up as a result of the visions and dreams and all of that they see. And they build doctrines from it. So many kinds. We can't begin. If we begin to read them, we will not, we will not close today. Lies and deceptions are everywhere. Satan is drawing men away from God. That's why he said in the last day, there's going to be a great, not just a few, but a great falling away from the faith. And so Jude is saying, contend for the faith that was once delivered unto you. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight it. If you are, that's why the Bible says, woe unto them also that that is a Zion. If you just sit down, anything that you hear, anything that flies, you just buy it and then you swallow. Just wait. One day, it won't be long. The devil will sift you like a wheat. So remember, what we are dealing with is how do we contend for the faith? Because the Bible says, contend endlessly for the faith which was once delivered unto you. Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. And then in that second Timothy, he said, I have fought. So he didn't just tell us to fight. He fought. And he's telling us that he has fought the good fight. He has finished his grace. Or his cause. How do you begin to fight? What does it mean? Fighting the faith is uh, making sure that, making sure, making sure that anything that you are hearing is the right thing. Because, like I said, if you hear the wrong thing, you're going to believe the wrong thing. 
And when you believe the wrong thing, you are going to do the wrong thing. And when you do the wrong thing, you will be destroyed. So destruction does not fall from the air. It's as a result of, it's a process. So the first way you are going to make sure you fight or you contend, don't just buy anything anybody say. That is why the Berea Christians, the Bible said that they are more noble, like the brethren from Thessalonica. Anything that you hear, Anything that anybody, te- even the one that I am telling you, even the one we are teaching and preaching, don't just take it like that. Go back and make research. That is how you become a student of the Bible. You become a student. Many people are not, we are supposed to be students. That's why you need to study to show yourself approved. A right work man. Not being ashamed of himself, but rightly dividing the word of truth. You must make effort. You must be a student. Don't just come to church. Because, see, if you are the type, you just come to church and sit down. When they share the grace, you go. The next time they are seeing you, is it won't be long. You won't be in the church again. Because there are so many things that are calling your attention and all. And then one day somebody will tell you, it's not about church. That church is in the heart. It doesn't matter whether you go to church and all of that. Anywhere you, you worship God, that God is everywhere. God is in your heart and all of that. So many funny things. So the first place to start is with your ear. What you give your ear to? Who do you listen to? First John chapter 1 verse 3. First John, sorry, chapter 4. First John 4, 1. First John 4, 1. Beloved brethren, or beloved, believe not what? <clears throat> believe not what? Every spirit. But try the spirits whether they be of who? God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. They are there. And they prophesy. And the kind of deception that is now is such that if you don't look very carefully, you will not be able to discern. The Bible says that the angel, I mean Satan, has transformed himself into an angel of light. So God is light. So he has camouflaged himself to be the same. So if you don't look very well, you will think that Satan is God speaking. You will not be able to differentiate the two. When you read Revelation chapter 6 and Revelation chapter 19, you would think it is the same person. That's how you see he had turned himself into an angel of light. And he is prophesying. And you think it is God. And sometimes he will prophesy the thing that is true. And you believe him. In Revelation 6, he talks about the, 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 the white horse. And then all the people that are following him. In Revelation chapter 19, he also talks about the white horse with the army that are following him. I remember one time somebody was uh, sent me a text. You know, you know, how the vision that he saw, she saw, it was a woman that she saw a vision and all of that and Jesus Christ was uh, speaking to him, I mean to her about certain things and all of that and he gave her Revelation chapter 6, that white horse and all of that, 
So when she gave it to me, when she sent me that in, I said, no, what you saw was devil, not Jesus Christ. She got angry. She started firing back and all of that. So I mean, I ignore her. I gave her Revelation chapter 19. I said, this one that is in Revelation 19 is Jesus Christ. This one is Satan. Because they are white, 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 white horses. If you don't read in between the lines, he said, and the armies which were in heaven followed him up upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. This is a white one. What is this? A revelation. If you go to Revelation chapter 6, you see another horse that is white. That one is Satan. This one is Jesus Christ. But they're all white. If you're not careful, if you are not okay, that's how it is. That's why the Bible says, study to show yourself approved, a right workman, not being ashamed of himself, but rightly dividing the word of the truth. You can be swept off your feet before you to say Jack Robinson. There are so many people, even those of us who are preaching, pastor, they are genuine and all of that. They could make mistakes. That's why Paul will say, pray for me that I may speak as I ought to. He's not saying that you pray for him so that he will catch revelations and all of that. He's saying that so that because I am a public person, so I command a lot of influence. I have a lot of followers and all of that. Anything that I say to them, they will believe it. So if I make mistake and say the wrong thing, they are going to believe those wrong things and begin to run with it. And sometimes when you turn around to correct, say that what he said was wrong, many of them will not believe you. <clears throat> so that is why he says, so that he will be very careful that whatever he's saying will be, always be the truth and on point. <clears throat> Give me Second Peter chapter 1, verse 15. He said, moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my disease, to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. You see, what they were doing in their time. We have not cunningly followed or followed cunningly devised fables. When we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So he's trying to address those of them who are living by visions and dreams and seers. They are seeing vision, they are seeing, hearing, hearing from God and doing all of that. He's talking about testing every spirit. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. You hear a lot of people say, Holy Ghost told me, God told me, Holy Spirit told me, Holy Spirit told me, God told me, and all of that. I saw a vision. There is nothing wrong about seeing a vision and God telling you. We are not quarreling about that. All we are saying is that to make sure that you are hearing the right thing. That's why he said, test. Put it to test. Anything you hear, subject it to test. Before you can accept it and begin to run with it. Subject it to death. Don't just hear something and begin to run. And sometimes when you hear, you present it before other people. Let them help you see. Even Paul, after God had called him, he said all, all that he learned, all that he saw, nobody taught him. He received it direct from God. There is no doubt about that. But guess what he did? He still went to men, to those of them who had been apostles before him. In Jerusalem and presented the same thing so that he will not be that he has had the wrong thing and he's running in vain. He subjected it to test. So, but what we do today, you just hear one thing and all of that, and then you begin to run with it. You will catch one revelation and then you begin to run with it. You believe the wrong thing. You're going to do the wrong thing. And I've read for you in the book of Jude. They, he said, you remember so many, many of them, God delivered them from Egypt. 
but none of them, except two, entered the promise that the rest of them were destroyed in the wilderness. And they won't be destroyed and they go to heaven. We have also a more sure of a more sure word of prophecy. You see, we see what he's saying. That voice we heard, all those things that we heard and all of that, all those things that we were told, he said, but there is one that is very, very much more authentic than the voice we heard. Who was the one that spoke to them? Who was the one that spoke in that excellent glory? Thou art my son. This is my son with whom I am well pleased. It was God speaking. But what is Peter saying? Even that voice, even that God that spoke, you have to subject that voice with the written word. If you don't have the habit of doing this, one day you hear the wrong thing and you believe that same wrong thing. And be. Satan is very smart. You know what he does? When he starts, he will be giving you visions and prophecy that are right. That's how he starts. He will tell you one and you believe it and you check it out and if it's true, then he will give you another one and he will look and it is true. And then he, he is the one doing that. He will give you another one. And then you check and it is true. And when he has seen that you have been used to, gotten used to it and all of that, he starts sliding in lies. So when he puts in lie, you will not suspect him. And nothing anybody will ever tell you that will make you believe that it is not God. That guy is very smart. It's only the wisdom of God. It's only by the Holy Spirit you can outsmart him. Without it, you are nothing. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in the dark. So he's telling you that the word of God is like a light that shines in dark. In a dark place. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. That is what happens when you begin to subject everything that you hear. The spirit subjected to test. By their fruits we shall know them. If you see somebody who say that he's a prophet and you look at his life and he's not living a life of righteousness and purity and holiness, he's a lie. He's prophesying lies to you. Because if your spirit is not right, you're going to be getting wrong signals from Satan. This is why he said by their fruits you know them. Because if a fresh water can never produce salt water. Neither can a salt water produce a fresh water. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. He said, there are false prophets also among you among the people, even as there shall be false teachers. So we have false prophets, we have false teachers in the body of Jesus Christ. And the one that tells you that sin cannot prevent you from going to heaven is a teacher, is an apostle, and he has large congregation. What on earth are you going to tell them? I have had an encounter with some of these people. I have had an encounter. It was after that I understood what the Bible meant. 
how deadly these people could be. There is no scripture. Even when you go to give him scripture, he will find a way and explain it out. Hebrew chapter, another one. That's so the first thing is, uh, <clears throat> remember how do we fight a good fight of faith? How do we contend for the faith? Number one, pay attention to what you hear. Don't just hear anything and believe anything. Subject everything that you hear to God's word. And sometimes, Take it to another person. Let him help you see. Number two, test every prophecy. Every teacher, because he said many prophets, he said false prophets and false teachers. So there are false prophets and there are false teachers. There are those who are seeing. Like I said before, I am not against the prophetic. It, prophetic is part of God's. How, why, who, is he, uh, is the person mad? Even teachers. So you can have false teachers. You can have false pastors. You can have false, they are everywhere. So what you are doing is, all this thing is that uh, the, the Peter, Paul, and the co, and all of that are trying to protect the sheep from the enemies. And what the enemy does is uh, to lie to them. <coughs> Because the greatest weapon Satan has is deception, lies. The very first time the Satan was mentioned in the Bible was serpent in Genesis chapter 3. The very first introduction, he said, that serpent that was subtle. He didn't say that serpent that was so powerful. Subtle is very crafty. It's very deceptive. So I said... Subject your ear to the writing. Number two, test every spirit. Number three, follow your leader. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of this life, the word of life, the word of God, whose faith do what? Follow, considering the end of their lives, the end of their conversation. Follow their footsteps. But there is a commander. You follow them as long as they do what? Follow Christ. You follow me as long as I follow Christ. The day I stop following Christ, stop following me. There is a teaching, or there was a teaching. I don't know whether the, that teaching has changed. Somebody was saying, you follow your leader back to back bumper to bumper. Even if he's going to hell, follow him. Believe in him. That is not true. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Be ye followers of uh, me even as I am even I also am of who? <coughs> you see, as I follow Christ, you follow me. When I stop following Christ, stop following me. That's why if you are in a church where you know that this person is preaching false teachers and false prophets and all of that, stop following them. Leave. Find another church where they are speaking and preaching the truth. And another thing is that if your heart is not ready, if you are not giving your heart to the truth, if you just want to hear what will please you and all of that, if you are not interested in the truth, 
then you'll be surely be very, very certain you are going to be misled. And then, you know that scripture, you know, in the book of Deuteronomy, the Bible says, do not sow different kinds of seed in the, in the farm. I play where you talk about wearing trousers and not wearing trousers and all those. All those in there are, all those is are type and shadows of the new. They are saying something different from. What he's saying is that you don't, you see, today you are in this church. Which church do you, which church do you go? He asked somebody. Well, and people open their mouth and say, which church do you be? He said it depends. It depends on what? It depends on my mood. One was talking to my wife and all of that. He was asking her. My wife asked her, which church do you go? He said it depends on the need. The day he will need uh, to, if his finances is going down, then he will go to a year depot. Then when he feels that he's, um, he's uh, not being holy, he needs to have some holiness stuff, he goes to Kumuyi. Then when he needs power, <laughs> he goes to Mountain of Fire. Oh no, when he needs deliverance, he, when he feels that there are some challenges and problems and all of that, he goes to Mountain of Fire. When he needs power, he goes to Dunamis. So it depends. So you hear from here. So he sowed his seed. He sowed different kinds of seed in the same ground. You hear this one, hear this one, hear this one. You are hearing from different whatever. When you finish, when you, you don't have a direction. When you speak, your words are in the air. I'm not for good. That's why Pastor David in those days, he said, the day I will hear you say, you stand, he said, somebody, you put somebody on his pulpit. You put, he said, somebody else said. He banned us from saying, God told me. He said, the day I will hear you from your mouth, God said. You know why he's doing that? So that first of all, you will be fed. He will be make he will make sure that you have been fed, you have been rooted and grounded in the truth. Okay? Now you can start listening to others. When you you will be able to discern the right from the wrong. But when you have not done that from the onset, you everywhere you hear from this person, you listen because now information everything is just at your at the at the push of your button. Any information in this world that you need, you just go to the internet. Just buy airtime of uh, 50 naira. You have um, internet and then you start. At least it will take you for 30 minutes or so. You will browse and get all the information. That's the danger of whatever that we are in today. First Timothy chapter 6, 11, he says, you commit yourself to the truth. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. All these things that will be, all these lies and stuff there. He said, flee these things. And follow after what? Righteousness, godliness, Remember, godliness is devoting your heart to God because you want God, because you want the truth, because God is searching to and fro in all the earth, looking for those whose heart are set on him so that he will show himself strong on their behalf. Follow after righteousness and godliness. Follow after faith, love, patience, and meekness, and the lies. Set your heart on this. This should be what is controlling you, not business, not deliverance. You didn't see any deliverance here. If you concentrate on this thing, every other thing will add up. So, the topic we had handled today is how to 
contend for the faith that was once delivered unto you. Put in another way, how to fight the good fight of faith because Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. So how do you, why must you fight that fight? Because there are so many lies and deception all over and many have fallen victims of it. So many people have been swept off their carpet, off their feet. And we have examples even in, from the Bible time. Those of them who were delivered from Egypt, none of them entered the promised land except three. All those angels that were once God's angels and all of that, because they, because they believed the lies that were told them by Lucifer and all of that. Look at where they have ended up. Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. So he has examples to show us and you read the after Peter again, the what Peter said in his writings and all of that, the same thing. Many people, and the, the Bible says in the last days, <clears throat> there is going to be a great falling away, falling away from the what? From, 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 falling away from the faith. Because there are so many lies going on. And <clears throat> nobody is going to come out and tell you, say, I want to tell you lies. Excuse me. Nobody is going to come out and say, I want to lie to you. They will present their lies in form of truth. They will take that poison, put it inside the apple, and say, Eat. On the outside, it looks nice. Inside is poison. Many. There are churches where you don't preach about, about against fornication and the adultery. and You dare not try it. One of the largest churches in Nigeria. You dare not try it. They will carry you out of the till today that I'm talking to you. Then you, are you talking about prosperity? So how you know that you are a child of God, that God is with you and you are doing well and all of that in the Lord? Is your, they will check, first of all, they look at what you wear and then check your business and check your whatever and all of that. That is evidence to prove that God is, but that all this is alive because they think that godliness is gain. There are so many of and you believe this, and people who believe this, thing, they are going to hell. Let somebody tell you the truth. They are going to hell. That's what the Bible is telling us. There are so many lies everywhere. But if your heart is set on the truth, you want to know God, no matter God will find a way. God will look it. Because he said he's searching. His eyes are looking for those of them whose heart are set on him to make him say. So once God sees you, he will draw you. He will plant you into the right family. Because he's the one that plants the solitary in family. The problem is your heart. What do you want? The truth. You want to know God. You want to love God. You want to, you want to live a life of holiness because this is the nature and the character of God. Is that what you want? If that is what you want, then you have arrived. God will locate you. God will find you. And he will plant you. And he will make you lie down on green pastures. And he will lead you beside still waters. And he will restore your soul for his name's sake. God bless you.